welcome to Awake TV. So today, Sun and I are going to talking about um, finding the highest positive timeline through acceptance and uh, finding self worth and uh, empowerment. So um, I was watching YouTube on the other day, and then it came to a particular uh, topic about acceptance and then that has been getting the message lately in my field and then i was thinking about that and then it came to me today uh, when you are accepting as is could be your situation your past whatever that is like instead of like having attachment like oh it should have been this way or i could have done this way or oh, we shouldn't experience this right now, whatever that is, right? If we are like um, not accepting as is, um, we are sort of um, going against the uh, energetically, like, like we are resisting. And then when we are holding on to whatever, should have done, could have done, whatever, that's going to, uh, kind of related to attachment and the way you are attached to something could be anything like past or past relationship or whatever right and then it's going to be very difficult for you to bring yourself up to uh, upgrade yourself to higher timeline because when you are holding on to something or because you can't accept as is, that's gonna bring you or stuck you into a particular timeline. Mm -hmm. So that's something I kind of like um, came to me and I wanted to discuss about, because timeline is really important. And then when um, you accept that and then as is, so you have no resistance toward it. So you're kind of floating timeline instead of like grabbing onto it. And then you discover the self-worth because no matter what is happening at this moment or past, you're, you kind of realize, let's say um, you don't have too much viewership or something, or for example, and then let's say you're talking about same topic as the other popular guru, but you don't get views, for example, right? I'm just mm -hmm. using as an example. And then you compare yourself like, hey, uh, compared to this person, like I'm this and that. And when you are kind of accepting your situation without a judgment, you kind of starting seeing your value your worth, it got nothing to do with external validation. It got nothing to do with um, social media likes or how many followers you have or subscribers. Because my guide has been saying, whatever you guys do uh, for having your heart and serving for others, it could be anything, right? That what valuable mm -hmm. nobody has to accept you and then you know you don't need approval you don't need a validation so when you realize that you started having power within yourself and then you know how to rebuild yourself and then when you know how to rebuild yourself that's kind of like turning into similar to how you're going to move up to the timeline so that's something i sort of like uh, connected to the dots today. So um, how do you feel about um, timeline, Sue? You're saying about how you kind of had a light bulb connection there. Yeah. And a similar thing happened to me this morning. Um, and I was listening to, you know, some material and something really just clicked in. And it's, it's like, we're talking about the same thing. And I'm going to approach it from another angle, just mm -hmm. a little bit. So, and I, and I have some of this written down, so I'm just going to pull it up so I, I don't miss something. Um, mm -hmm. But 
And that, and that's how I like internalize things too. Like I have to write it down and I have to switch my words around and then I go, okay, now I get this. So if I got it, then I can tell somebody else about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you and I have been talking about, um, timelines for a little while Mm -hmm. and we covered the elements of um, that each of us has our own timeline Mm -hmm. and then there's also a collective timeline and what that means is people vibrating at a similar level that agree upon a similar reality they share events yeah so there's a collective timeline Mm-hmm. And we talked in the past about how like our own timeline can be part of the collective, but we're all going to experience it in our own unique way. Yeah. So our time, our timeline is our own. Yeah, so because the, our vibration is different. We're vibrating differently. So no of the timeline is exactly the same. Exactly the same, right. Whole yep. vibrational level. So right. we, we all fluctuate you know, until we stabilize, well, we all have a core vibration, how we have, uh, we are vibrating in, in core, we, like core um, frequency. Mm-hmm. So, so we so have the vibration. individual one, yeah, and we have the collective one. Yeah. And, you know, the piece that I got today, which I think hit me so profoundly is that Everybody talks about the shift, the big great awakening when all the, you know, all the truths come out and the financial system changes and the political system and everything just changes. And now we're in new earth and we're in 5D and popcorn and celebration and all of that kind of stuff. And everybody's just looking for signs and we're listening to each other and we're collaborating and all of that stuff's really great. However, the piece of information that I got today um, kind of helped me to see that I'm still creating it, that there's no outside source that's going to get me to the vibration that I need to be at in order for me to experience the shift. And furthermore, because so we say on one hand, there's no time, everything's all happening at once. What are we talking about? Then the next minute you're saying, oh, there's timelines. So that might be confusing to people. It confused me. But where I clicked today is when I said, oh, the event is a dimensional time. It's not linear time like we're talking about a calendar, like humans keep track of time. So in that case, each one of us our shift and our reality is all going to change when our vibration goes to such a level that it aligns with that circumstance. So if we were looking at human linear time, yours might happen in January and mine not, may not happen until August, but we're not talking about, um, you know, a shared reality. We're talking about independent timelines now. But um, we're all going to experience it at the same time because the minute you shift to that ultimate timeline with a great awakening happens, you're going to meet all the other, all the rest of us at that vibrational level. And so what that means is like the version of me that exists on that timeline will have already gotten there as well. And so it seems like we all arrive at the same time, but we really arrive in our own time. So I know I just said a lot of stuff that might sound confusing, but let me break it down to this, which is the only source that can get us to our timeline is ourself and our vibration, period. It doesn't matter what Joe Blow says is happening. Oh, well, these are the signs and it's, and it may be, it may be the shift's going to happen and the financial reset's going to happen uh, January 25th. That's what Joe Blow says. Okay. Am I going to be in, in alignment with that? Is my vibration going to be high enough, you know, for that on January 25th? That's up to me. It's not up to Joe Blow. It's not up to you. It's not up to my family. It's not up to my neighbors. It's it's up to me. And so can that come to fruition? 
Yes. Um, can it happen before the 25th? Yes. Can it happen in 10 years from now? Yes. But it's, it's on me whether I raise my vibration to that level and then I can step onto that timeline. And the way that I understand it the best and I can explain to other people is I've been saying for a long time, the reason a psychic reading is dependent on the person receiving the reading is because the psychic, what they can do is they can see your dimensional, like events in your timeline that are probably going to come to pass. I mean, chances are a really good probability that they're going to happen if you stay on the current vibration. And, but they can't give you exact dates and times because it's up to you. So they can tell you X, Y, and Z is going to happen in the next year. And there's a good probability that X, Y, and Z are going to happen in the next year. However, what if you shift your frequency and your vibration? So like they told you, if you get on that plane, the plane's going to crash. And so you changed your decision about getting on that plane and you said, okay, I have this information and now I'm making a different decision. So basically you've just changed that timeline because you made a different choice. We can do the same thing energetically. So um, maybe, you know, say for New York, there's going to be all these lockdown, everybody's predicting this is going to happen, that's going to happen, people are going to be forced to do things they don't want to do, and all of that. If I buy into it, and I get really scared and go into fear, all of that stuff may happen. But if I rise above that information, that outside external information, those predictions, and I just have my highest joy, and I, and I accept myself exactly how I am, I don't have to change, I don't have to clear anything, I don't have to fix myself, I'm just getting really happy in my environment and in my life, because I feel pretty good about myself, and I have self-acceptance, like you were saying, then my vibration goes up, and chances are, I'm not going to see any of that stuff that's being predicted about what's going to happen just because you live in New York. My reality is going to be all different. Why? Because I jumped a timeline. I went to a higher vibration where none of that actually came to pass. So does, does it make sense like what I'm saying about the, um, the comparison with, you know, like a psychic reading and timelines? Just, just, am I making sense about why? things can happen the way that they tell you they can happen or we can completely change it yeah but uh, I want to put um, extra information on top of that a couple of years ago 90 Acturians who are my guy but I was listening to Daniel Scranton and then I think yesterday or something they happened to be talking about timeline topic as well so what they told me was, um, you have a core vibration. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the, uh, let's say your water, you just think of you as a water. And then bottom of the water, there's some impurity stuff is floating around. It's slightly, but it's there. And then when you don't clean that up, the ringering stuff is always affecting the whole water. So mm -hmm. I remember their um, teaching when they told me about that. Because it, I thought, you know, oh, you know, like you just uh, have to be super positive, blah, blah, blah. But what they told me is you do have to take care of that core ringering uh, tone to it. Because when you have those, it's always going to affect to the whole part of your ocean. Mm -hmm. So um, this is very important for, you know, I'm letting you guys know, just because you started to decide to be positive or something, that doesn't mean you can stop working on yourself or working yourself with professional like us. because. Um, these core, you know, if you work hell out of it and then uh, you don't have too much those ringering stuff, then that's fine. But 
like positive mindset or you decide, okay, I decided to be super positive and every single thing you have been accumulating in the cellular level and all that kind of uh, uh, vibrational um, stuff you got from ancestors or you got from your uh, past lives or blah, 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 it's still there. So, um, see, I kind of take a different tack on it. I, I really think I believe in the body mind connection. And I think that once we make a decision that we're not going to let that stuff hang on us like an anchor, almost like you have no past, it's kind of like that's when we connect into the quantum and we decide to pick a higher version of ourselves, a version of us that that no longer touches because it's a higher dimensional energy. And so I don't think that we have to be slave to our past. I think that at any given time, we can just transmute it because we said, okay, we've learned what we needed from it. Now we can just let it go. I, I just, I think that people are clearing themselves all the time. And it's like, my yeah, God, it, it's it, like dust. It, you can dust all day long and there's still going to be dust um, because we're human. But on the other hand, if we're picking a higher level consciousness, um, that's where the alchemy can shift what you're experiencing in your, your now moment, which is, you know, I can either choose to be sick or I can choose to be healthy. I can be perfect health. I can change my body shape just by thinking about it. Um, I don't have to go on a diet. I, I think that whole, you know, you have settle you know settlement in the water is is kind of like um it's almost an older way of thinking in a sense that it's always going to be with me no matter what I do and I and I think we can choose not to have path I think we can choose not to have a past we could say I'm starting from here and I'm creating now instead of being like a victim or slave to what was that's not what Acturians are saying. What they're saying is it's all of our vibration. So those lingering vibrations do affect um entire harmony. So I was being told by that. And I'm the someone who can feel the vibration from everything and anything. And so I work on myself, I work on my client. So I know what they said is true. You know, mm-hmm. according to what I know of. So I just believe in instant transmutation. So I guess we'll have to degree, agree to disagree on it. Um, yeah. I mean, but, you know, you have fun. to make a decision that you're going to do that. It, it's not like you can do it if you half believe in it. You have to really believe in it. And that's, you know, I'm talking about a level of vibration where, you know, this goes back to Rumi. This goes back way way back to you know some of the really old time philosophers that said you know there is no past there is no future there's only the moment and what they mean is you know each single moment that we're in is a moment of creation and guess who's creating it we are and so it can be just this moment that I decide I'm not going to let outside sources tell me what when the shift is going to happen for me, I decide. I decide because I choose, you know, it's not like putting your head in the sand like you're a camel and you're just not paying attention to what's going on. It's like I'm choosing my joy because this is my reality. And um, so if something comes up and I have to deal with it, you know, for example, I have a flat tire or something like that. Yeah, it's inconvenient. Am I going to make a big deal out of it? Am I going to say it ruined my whole day? No, because it's just a flat tire. All I got to do is get it fixed and then I can enjoy the rest of my day. Some people will take something like that and they'll ruminate on it all day and they'll turn it and blow it up into this big existential crisis. It's just a fucking flat tire, right? So, I mean, as human beings, we all have those little things that go on in our day to day. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I can 
increase my vibration by, you know, being grateful by totally accepting myself, not thinking that I have to change in any way. Not that it's not, I'm not willing to change. If I notice something that I don't like that I'm doing, absolutely. I'm willing to, but you know, self-acceptance exactly the way you are right now. Um, whether it be like, you know, say you want to change your body image or you don't like your hair, or, um, maybe you don't like the way you react to other people that, you know, don't treat you so well. Those are, those are habits, you know, we can, we can change our habits, but, um, if we can't find acceptance for what is, then, we're always in a energy of want and lack and need. And that's not the vibration that gets us on the highest timeline. That's all I'm saying, you know, like ruminating on that stuff. And I know people that just go from one person to another person to another person, and they're constantly clearing and healing and clearing and healing and clearing and healing. When the hell are you ever going to be done? Um, (laughs) you know, it's a, it's really a choice whether we carry forward those, those anchors that used to drag us down, or do we get to a point where we say, okay, I get the point. I get the lesson. I know that I suffered. I know that I struggled. Now I'm choosing something different. Now I'm going to do it. Now I'm choosing something new. I'm choosing happiness and I'm going to do it with everything that I have in this body right now. Yeah, I understand that. But working on yourself doesn't mean you're choosing suffering or whatever that is. It's just you do have a physical body. You do have a human body. You do have this uh, ancestral energetic inheritance and stuff like that and the cellular memory and everything. So... In order to come to a certain point, you can make a decision to say, okay, I choose to be, um, you know, uh, increase my focus on joy and love and all that kind of stuff. Then you can shift to higher frequency in order to become that level. You're not going to be like that from day one when you didn't do any work on yourself. Oh, gosh, yeah, I agree with you that, completely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm no, saying. no, I think we're talking about the same things and absolutely. Um, because you know, some, and, people, some people, they just want to say mindset and then you just want to decide like, you know, whatever you're going to do this and the whole external world and the internal world are going to change like drastically and the miracle happens. But I'm the one who can see the vibration, who can feel the vibration from everything, anything, even within the emotion and everything. And your soul, your soul is engraved with all of experiences. And then sometimes you are not letting go of something from past life or your bloodline or whatever. If you didn't let go of a certain percentage, it just doesn't happen overnight. No, no, no. But I, it, I mean, it can. You can make a shift. Um, when you, it, it depends on willingness, really. I yeah, think. Plus, you, you know, I'm pretty sure those of you who are watching this channel, you worked on yourself at a certain degree. But I'm talking about some of you guys who, you know, started working on your spiritual path or awakening and then just started getting into it that kind of thing so you know it depends on who you are where you are how you know you grew up or what kind of uh, past life you had or all that kind of stuff family mm-hmm. we can't really put everything in generalized position like i have a girlfriend who you know is spiritually awakened but she she grew up in very blessed environment so um you know compared to someone who came up you know grew up in really really fucked up family like environment it's less work to do so it's different depends on who you are and the way you are at so what actuarians are saying is these are always lingering in 
vibration. So level of lingeringness is different from who you are and what kind of stuff you experienced from. So whenever you get triggered, you know, don't ignore it and then uh, brush it off under the rug and say, oh, I made a decision to be happy today so I can forget about this lingering 10% stuff. That's what I wanted to, um, you know, you guys to be aware of that because that's what Actarians told me, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago, you know. Well, you know, in a way it's common sense because if you haven't done any work on yourself, matter of fact, I had a, I had a lady call me today who is a quantum healer as well. And we were talking about some things and she was telling me one of her, um, she was, I think she was doing a swap session with another practitioner, like brand new practitioner. <laughs> She's the lady um, that she was doing the swap session with uh, said to her after, well, I don't think I was hypnotized. And she's, oh, okay, well, you know, let's talk about it let's uh let's have discussion and um she says well how many of these the girl that she was working with well how many of these practice sessions do I have to do I mean before I can just start charging and uh she said well how many have you done and she said one and I went you got to be kidding me really she she's already worried about like when she can go out and oh I know it was she she the person that she had done the session with did, she didn't feel she had been hypnotized that's what it was I'm sorry I got the anyway um and I said what did you say <laughs> she's um she goes well I'm not going to tell her what to do but obviously you're not going to have a lot of success as a practitioner until you practice I mean, I don't remember exactly how many sessions I did, but I did a lot um, well before I started doing it on a professional level. And um, I enjoyed it. It was like, you know, but I put the work in. And so you're talking about clearing, you know, family lineages and past lives and all that residue, that cellular memory and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't focus on that anymore because I've been doing that for over 30 years. And yeah, but we're talking about regular people. You well, know, I am a regular person. Well. And I mean, there's a lot of people out there that do, you know, that have been working on themselves for a long time too. Um, so, you know, we're kind of talking about apples and oranges in the sense that, you know, we're talking about, like, I thought we were going to talk about timelines and staying, you know, how to get to your highest timeline and self-acceptance and that kind of thing. So, you know, if you're talking about people that haven't put any work in, yeah, they've got a ways to go. I mean, you can't just snap into a higher vibration because obviously they haven't gotten through the detritus that has caused them trouble in their lives. Um, yeah, because I'm it's kind of more about instant gratification, right? Like uh, um, people, you know, a lot of people might be used to get something you want right away, right away, right away. But it's the same thing as dating. Like you can't you can go to Olympic without practicing something. And then once yeah. you go to the master level, when I was doing matrix energetics, um, you know, I finished all level. And then when we, we finish, finished our uh, practitioner training, and then our teacher, Richard, said, um, you guys um, don't even think about doing any kind of matrix energetics. And then one person, you think about what you want, the other person go as far away as the other person to see. And then we always have someone in behind to make sure uh, the other person who is receiving stuff not going to fall because a lot of people do fall and you don't want other people to hit their head. So what happened was me and the two other Brazilian girlfriends, um, she thought about something. I decided to walk to the window and then she fell. And then the other girlfriend was like sporting. So she didn't really hit her head. And then she, we, are, we are kind of laughing, like, oh, we didn't do anything, but it worked. So let me do it. So we switched the place and she did it. I'm going to go to the window too. And I fell. And then after we did our um, practice, um, then one of the students, we had three, 300 students in that um, seminar. And then Richard, Richard, 
if, why do we have to study all these four level when we end up, we don't have to do anything. Let our field work on quantum miracle. If that's what it is, why we have to go through all level. And then Richard was saying, you don't go to this level of you do nothing and let the field work on your client. Um, you become that level after you learn everything. And, and, and practice it, it right? Yeah. I mean, you don't just read it and then all of a sudden you know how to do it. You have to practice it. Yeah. So I, I think it's kind of, you know, I think we have to give our audience a lot of credit for being pretty smart that way and assuming that like if there's if there's a reason there's something going on in your own personal dynamic which is keeping you from feeling joy obviously you have to work through that um I guess I'm kind of focusing more on the idea that um we need to stop waiting for some outside source to give us a sign that it's happening where we're moving into our own awakening in our own time and of course everybody's gonna do it differently but then you know once we get there because we've raised our vibration we've come to love ourselves unconditionally we've accepted ourselves we found our own empowerment all those other people that are there with us they may have actually on human timeline gotten there on a different date but we're all meeting in the same dimensional time it's it's like we all arrived at the same time and in the end it doesn't matter who gets there first or when I get there as long as I get there we're just I think I'm trying to help people understand that it's like don't look for some outside source to tell you when the great awakening is going to happen because that's not how it works we're creating it yes we have to work through our detritus yes we have to you know get to a point through our work our internal Kernel work to total self love and really high vibration for us to experience it. However, um, nobody's going to decide for us. We're we're going to decide that because and that we're going to either put the effort in to get to that high vibration, or we're not. Um, and we're going to do it in our own time. And it doesn't matter like how fast or slow you go, but it will go faster. The, the higher you can rise your vibration. It just, that's the way energy works. It, the more light you have, the more heat, the more the molecules move faster. You know, if you want to throw some science in there, but the shift happens faster too. The events happen faster. So I just say, you know, we've been talking about this for months now, you and me, Erica, and it's like, Every time you turn around, somebody's worried about some new piece of information that somebody else put out there. And I just say, I really wish people wouldn't do that because you're you're impeding your own progress by listening to that and going into fear. The, the best way to help yourself is staying out of fear. Well, yeah, we've been talking about that. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you guys are creator. So whatever you digest yourself, the information or whatever the stuff you watch or whatever the stuff you decided to believe in, you're including that into your reality because you're mm-hmm. creating the stuff as those stuff as ingredient, right? Mm-hmm. So, you're basically uh-huh. agreeing to it, right? Yeah. You're bringing so, it in. Yeah, that's what my guide are saying, like, you know, uh, do you really want to watch that? You know, that was, um, I don't know, three four years ago you know Mm -hmm. i mean sometimes i have a guilty pleasure i do watch certain like you know loyal tarot card reading to satisfy me with my guilty pleasure right i i know it's not completely high vibrational but you know i'm a human so i want to watch those but (laughs) anything like puts you into um fear even this is why exactly astra doesn't do prediction um when we did a 2022 uh, transmission, some people said, I wanted to know more details. Asta's job is not like giving you the prediction for the whole collective or something. Because when any being does that, in a way, you're manipulating the timeline. Right? So let yeah, people believe it. Let mm-hmm. people lead into certain timelines. 
regardless of it's good or bad, that is kind of like a violating your free will. Mm-hmm. So this is why Aster, when I channel, you're never going to tell a particular event when. incident. Or even, not even when, he doesn't talk about particular incident or event that, yeah, the quantum financing system is happening, Medved is coming, that's a fact. It's nothing to do with the manipulation about that. But the point is, um, you know, certain, even event, like, I don't think it's going to happen in my reality. It happened three years ago, I saw it, but that's not my reality anymore because my vibration is much higher now. So even that, you decide if you want to include the event as your reality. And exactly. You mm-hmm. shift into a particular uh, timeline. Like think about timeline as a stairs, right? So when you go to one step above, like upstairs, 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 more high you go, like that's like a higher vibrational timeline. So when you look at the stairs as long, long, wide line, that's what timeline is. So when we wobble our timeline, of course we have a core timeline, but sometimes we are kind of a little bit here, a little bit here, but more and the more we let go of something, like let go of like, um, it should be this way or it should be that way. For example, when you let that go, then your vibration goes up, then your timeline goes up automatically. So any timeline you see from this, then from here, it's not linear, okay? It's not just one timeline. From this level of timeline, there are thousands of millions of mm-hmm. timelines, depends on how you create it. So the interesting thing, um, I think about what you said is um, also, I think we're, you talked about the wobble. I think what we're actually doing is through our vibration, sometimes we can go back down onto the lower timelines, uh, just meaning things become more difficult. And then we can bring ourselves back up again. And then we're back on this other timeline. And so like, I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but I've noticed things changing in the environment. Um, something was here and then it wasn't. And, you know, that sort of thing. We talked about this a few episodes ago um, about shifting timelines um, yeah. quickly, quickly. And so, you know, I think the whole purpose of us talking about all this today is just to help people remember that, you know, the self-acceptance, not, not being attached to outcomes, like you said, not worrying, well, why isn't it this way? It should be this way. You know, the reason not to do that is because um, you don't want to shift into a lower dimensional timeline because you're not going to like what's on it. And then you're going to have more to complain about. Um, And I wanted to ask you a question, Erica, you had said your guilty pleasure. Sometimes you listen to tarot readings and everything. So of gossip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And me too. Yeah. I do that too. But why doesn't your vibration get lowered when you do that? Why? I want you to tell everybody. Um because it got nothing to do with my life. It's almost like um I don't watch TV, right? But when I watch a movie because my background background was making movies. I know exactly how people make movies, what's going on behind of the scene. So when I watch movie, I don't watch horror movie, but let's say I watch movie, I know it's fake. So mm-hmm. I don't really get influenced by by watching it. So what if so, it was a tarot reader and they were the they were reading if they were reading just for you and they told you something and and probably 90% of people would be upset by it. Why don't you get upset by it? Because it's not about my reading. No, I'm saying it is your reading. What I'm getting at, and I'll just spit it out, is um, once everybody gets to the point where they can discern information. So 
I chose because of guilty pleasure, I want to watch a tarot reading, and then maybe it's gossipy. So you might say, well, that could be a lower vibration. But that's really? if I buy into it hook, line, and sinker, and I take it as gospel, and I just think, well, that's what it is. It's reality. But if I don't buy into it, and I just look at it as, well, it's a form of entertainment. Well, that was interesting. Then I haven't lowered my vibration. Or if somebody... You don't, you know, feeling hate toward a particular. You're not person. angry about it. You're not taking yeah, it so seriously. Yeah. You're just using it as entertainment. Like you said, you know, the workings behind it, whatever, you know, that it's a production, you know, that it's somebody else's filter. Um, but right. if I were to, you know, have my own personal tarot reading, for example, and I've had a number of them in my lifetime and 90% of it resonates with me and I'm like I find it helpful but then there's this like 10% that came out of nowhere and I'm like I don't even know what this means if I take it really seriously and get upset about it I'm going to lower my vibration but if I take that 10% and go ah you know what that doesn't apply to me but this I'm going to keep this 90% which is helpful to me then that's a successful reading and and it doesn't matter that it wasn't 100% accurate. It means like I got 90% of something beneficial out of that reading. But it's, 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 you know, people, there are some people that will take that 10% and be really pissed off about it. They'll think the whole thing should be thrown out the window. This person isn't any good. They don't know what the hell they're doing. You know, that's the difference between you and me and, and how some people treat the world. It's, it's like, be, be discerning, you know, trust yourself. If, if, if that 10% wasn't for you, that's fine. But look at what you benefited. You got 90% better than you had when you walked in the door, take that and be happy. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a good outcome for or by that, most people's standards. If you worry about that 10%, think about how you can work on yourself to get rid of whatever the 10% worry right yeah uh, that's how i want to work on myself if if tarot card readers say something like uh makes me feel uh global for example but you know how i work on myself with those kind of results is very different from other people because i'm gonna talk to my guide anyways and then like sometimes I just want to use those people to see if they can, um, they can see something I don't see, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. it's like, you know, it's always a good idea to choose someone you trust. And there's some of the, um, uh, uh, general, general reading, some of the reader I follow, they're really good at it. Mm -hmm. But even they're really good at it. 98% of the time it's, sound like your personal reading even though they're doing general reading even those people sometimes they are hit and miss then mm -hmm. you feel like you know whatever the stuff it doesn't resonate well either you can stop watching that's what I do if they think well it's not for me so I don't accept that piece of ingredient into my creation right you're or, not taking it on as it's yours you're yeah you're saying, okay, that's their energy. That's fine. But I'm not taking it on. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, some something like a guilty pleasure of loyal Tao I, I, I watch. I just kind of watch almost like a, a, something I used to watch entertainment tonight. I don't watch it anymore. But, you know, when you watch entertainment tonight, like, it's like... um the new sub entertainment industry yeah. and then sometimes they talk about something stupid you know mm -hmm. and then you're just gonna listen to it because it's kind of kind of funny you know so to me the loyal tarot card reading is something along the line with that yeah yeah i gotcha but as long as you feel joy from it and you you are finding like um yeah, joy from it. I don't think anything wrong with that. Mm -mm, but sometimes no. it's fun. Yeah. Oh, and gosh, you can't yeah. be too holy about everything, you know? 
I love the raunchy uh, comedians. Every once in a while, I've been watching uh, Dry Comedy Bar on YouTube. I listen to it when I'm working. And some of it has just made me laugh so hard. But you know what? There's a higher vibration. So the information's raunchy. So the joke is not PC. Who cares if it made me laugh? Um, that's way better than sitting around worrying about the state of the world. Oh, the world, world's going to burn. One of my good friends um, was talking to me yesterday and she said, you know, I heard from so many people the day before I was literally on the phone from the morning till 11 o'clock at night. I was like, wow. And she goes, yeah. And she said, I think, oh, just all different friends, people she hasn't heard from in years, you know, just people calling. And she goes, you know, the predominant theme of it was, you know, with all these people. And I said, yeah, I said, what? She's the world's going to burn. Aren't you worried about it? Everything's going to hell in a handbasket and we're all going to die or whatever. And I said, well, what did you do? And she, she just said, I just changed the subject. That's a good she said, idea. I just tried to bring in, like, I tried to bring in um, some comedy. One of my friends got really mad at me because I was kind of making a joke out of something. She's like, you're making fun of me. She says, no, I'm just trying to lighten up the mood. <laughs> you're being way too serious. Um, and she just, but the thing I thought was the best was that she didn't jump into their energy with them. She didn't jump on the burning earth and go down, <laughs> the, go down the rabbit hole. So, you know, I think the last thing I can say to everybody is that's what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, do whatever you need to do. Um, work on yourself, but don't don't go don't go down somebody else's rabbit hole you know your your timeline is your own yeah like uh yeah yesterday uh one of my girlfriend texted to me and she started talking about covid so i said i don't want to talk about it good for you you know it's a good idea to because i wanted to know how she's doing you know Mm mm-hmm and yeah, but she didn't want to talk about that topic. It's, it's she, like talking about politics. Like, I, I, am I okay with it? You know? Mm. Uh, sorry to laugh, but I thought that was kind of, you know, so I said, I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about something more meaningful. Personal to meaning, you. Meaningful to me, how she's doing, for example. Yeah. You know? That's usually why we connect with each other because we want to know how each other's doing. It's like, yeah so yeah it's a good idea to have a disarmament you know um if you feel like certain subjects you don't want to talk about it uh you should say your friend or your loved ones or some someone you really you have a close relationship with tell them that you don't want to talk about it because that's kind of like a testing ground how close you are so you can say anything mm-hmm. you know and then plus that's kind of like loving yourself so you don't put yourself into that kind of vibration because it depends on what kind of thing you decided to talk about. Even like the topic by itself has a vibration. It does. You know? It really does. And that, yeah. that, that'll pull you off your oh, yeah. high vibe and timeline in a quick hurry. Just having the conversation because all that feeling like you said we have cellular memory so if you decide to go on a topic that has a low vibe like that you're gonna pull your cells are gonna go oh okay i guess we're on this timeline you're gonna drag yourself right down you know don't do it man the old saying don't do it man (laughs) yeah i mean seriously (laughs) so it's a good idea to i'm not saying like we are not saying bury your, your head in the sand I'm saying, you know, focus on you, focus on what you want to talk about, makes you happy, and then stick to it. Like, I don't know if other people are talking about um, apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, the biblical uh, apocalypse, yep. Uh, I, I, I didn't know if people are talking about it, but she and Maria was, Maria was talking about other people talking about it so she was talking about her point of view of it so until i listened to her youtube content i didn't know other people talking yeah about you it. didn't even know it was being discussed i know it doesn't have to my reality 
Yeah. I'm not thinking about it. I'll tell you that. I promise you that. You know, one last thing. If when you're setting boundaries with people, um, if they can't respect it, that tells you what you need to know about that person. And you might want to limit your time with them. Oh, yeah. There are I mean, some people that will push their agenda. It doesn't matter if you say, hey, listen, I don't really want to talk about that subject. They just keep going like you didn't even speak. Well, <laughs> I, I suggest you really limit your time with those kind of people. If not, yeah. get rid of them altogether because who needs that? You know, I don't need your your density thrust on to me. I don't mean to be obnoxious about it, but it's like, I've really had it with people that try to push their agenda, no matter what, if they're not respecting your boundary, cut them loose, baby. That too, plus um, just because of what we do, what we do, we're not some kind of personal counselor to the friends, you know? That's right. Um, We're not. Or some kind of a gas station to give these people a high vibe, uh, Octa. yeah you know so, i'm not your personal jesus go talk to <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's a good idea to let people know because you know i don't personally do it when i go you know i'm having my personal crisis and I grab my phone to my friend to dump all feeling toward this person you know i mean i don't do it but because I feel like, okay, I, I got to take care of myself first to bring myself up to certain level. Then I talk about it, you know? <laughs> or, you know, you pick and choose which friends you know that you think can handle it. And, you know, like if you're really in a dark spot or whatever and just say, hey, you got time to talk, having a hard time, you know, that person generally be like, oh yeah, call me, you know? And then you can do that. But um, just to grab somebody and say, hey, you're my friend. So you're going to listen to me and I'm going to dump all my shit on you. No, <laughs> no. That, that's you can talk to your therapist or something. Yeah, go get a therapist. <laughs> or have a quantum healing session and find out what your what your uh, what your subconscious is really wanting, you know. I've I'm, I'm yeah. got a little serious on you there, but it's like, um, or go have a Reiki session or, you know, like I know quantum healing, so I can tell you it works, but, um, you know, maybe you don't connect to that, whatever, you know, you want to go to Erica and get some matrix energetics or some Reiki or some yoga or some whatever, but I mean, definitely reach out if you need the help, but don't, don't pick your nearest friend and dump on them. That's not cool yeah yeah definitely so you know it, it's it's a it takes um practice to be a servant being you know you be independent so you're not going to be you're not going to be codependent because we are interdependent so we do help with each other mm -hmm. but you know aware yourself aware other people so you know other people are not your dumping ground 100 percent no matter who they are could be your husband it could be a boyfriend it could be a best friend you know yeah and yeah. you know and that's why we meditate because we talk to our higher selves we talk to our guidance team and even if we just have a conversation with our uh, our own subconscious you know or we just quiet the mind that works a lot too but like you said self-reliance and solving, you know, your own crises um, is, is definitely a good step. Yeah, I mean, after you take care of a certain level, then you can talk about it. So you're not dumping like a crazy amount to your friend. That's yeah, how people you know. run. When they see that person coming, they freaking run. So like, you have to ask yourself, why is it? Why don't they ever pick up the phone? Why don't they ever like want to hang out with me? Well, could be the problem yeah i mean it's it's really important to be aware of how you are um, behaving right yeah what do you bring to the table to those relationships so that's all part of you know personal growth yeah definitely so well, um yeah so yeah that's part of like a kind of like um controlling not controlling it's not the right way but um adjusting your vibration you know mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the more high vibe you go, you start to being aware of your feelings and then other people's feelings and then your internal environment and the external environment. So you will be, you will be more balanced being. So you know how to have a harmonious relationship with other people. Yeah. Yeah. And then that just builds on itself. You know, once you start doing that, it just gets better and better and better and you get better at it. Yeah. And then also then you're going to attract more people like you and then the people who are different from you, you used to hang out, they kind of disappear, you know, with no, no reasons. And then don't even like say, thinking like, oh, I did something wrong. It's just you're no longer vibrationally match to these people. So just that's it. And then if they raise their vibration up, they're going to come back into your, your life. So don't worry about it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we wanted to talk about today. And then I hope you guys have a great weekend. And please uh, share, like, subscribe. And we see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.